Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Saturday evening episode of Ted's Food Cellar with me, your most gracious host Ted. I'm boiling alive here, I've already had a shower today, so I'm going to have probably another one after this episode is done. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at a, another homemade uh, alcohol. Um, we've only reviewed two before in the past. We reviewed uh, my old colleague uh, Benjamin's homemade brown ale. Um, that was back during the first lockdown, almost a couple of years ago now. Um, that was really, really nice. I believe it was somewhere around like 6.1 to 6.7% alcohol volume. Um, we then reviewed my mate Philip's uh, homemade uh, lemon and vanilla mead recently. Um, Oh, I think it was just generally citrus and vanilla mead anyway. Um, and that was probably, I think, about like 4 to 6%. Um, that wasn't great, but it was you had to you know give credit to the effort that was there. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at a beer made by another one of my former colleagues from my old job at the University of Sussex Students' Union Bars. And that is my dear old friend, uh, Elliot. Um, he and his uh, friend and housemate, Toza, have um, have really stepped up their game in sort of like making sort of homemade sort of a uh, uh, food and drink, and I've got to give credit to them because I think the more that we do that, the less waste there will be in the world, and you know it kind of breeds creativity. I think so. I've got to give them massive credit there. Um, now I met with them after work yesterday to have a nice chilled out drink, and uh, they handed me over a bottle of this beer that they made. This is um, their uh, as their. Um, They've named their brewery uh, Surrey Street Brewery, uh, which is um, uh, right near the um, uh, the tr uh, Brighton train station in the uh, middle of town. Uh, and then they've called it uh, Hazy Gravy. Now, as far as I'm aware, what they told me is this is a APA style kind of beer, an American pale ale. Um, I'm going to try and find out what kind of ingredients and hops were in this, um, and when I do, I will be putting that in the video description down below as soon as I find that out. Um, they did say it was, um, I don't know, it was probably around about like, you know, five to six percent roughly, so it's about the strength of like an average APA, really. Um, and I've got to say, um, I like the design of the bottle, but that might be because it's a uh, repurposed bottle of Hobgoblin Ale. But, um, I like the effort, and I do like the label. This has a real proper homemade feel about it, and I really like that. Um, so I'll give the good. I'll give. Um, I'll give the design and everything. Um, honestly, like a ten. Like this is really what I look for: is just simplicity, proper homemade, really, really honest, sort of the earth kind of stuff. I like it. Really nice. Uh, so yeah, designing the bottle and the label, good solid 10 out of 10, I think. Now, let's uh, have a quick sniff of it and see what our first impressions are like. I like how they managed to get the um, the lid properly affixed on as well. That was really nice. Very, very well done. That's, I can imagine it's probably not too easy to do without like you know the equipment you'd find in a big brewery factory. But anyway, let's have a quick sniff of it and see what our first impressions are like. So, mm, okay. Has that initial hint of like an uh, sort of a European sort of like wheat beer? Mm, it has honestly this head scent of like a slightly citrusy, very yeast heavy um, kind of vice beer. It's just not the scent I was expecting. I was expecting it to probably be a bit more mellow. But what is there is nice. Um, it's a little bit overpowering in the sense that it's very yeasty, uh, particularly at the back of the nostrils. But what is here is really nice. Uh, mellow out the flavours, adding a bit more of that citrus into the nose, and you have a perfect uh, nose here. Uh, so I think I'll give it a solid 8.5 out of 10 for the smell. Now, considering it's homemade, I'm going to try and get one of my glasses out to uh, to try this little treat. So we'll get the old um, craft uh, beer glass, and uh, we'll see what our first impressions are like with at least the look of it. So anyway, Ooh, that's a good colour, actually. Almost mango-y, actually. Yeah, that looks a lot like a mango IPA. Very hazy. This looks like a proper craft beer. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, very nice. I'll give the, I'll give the look of it, actually, another 10 out of 10. That's That, that looks like a proper solid uh, homemade beer. I like the look of that. Anyway, um, I'll have a quick palate cleanser of water before we taste this. 
and then on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this tastes like. So, to everyone at home, bottoms up. Ooh, ooh, that is good. Mmm. See, it's actually kind of got like the texture of like a European centric um, light lager, like a Stella. It's got a bit of fizz, but generally it's quite smooth to go down, kind of like um. Actually, no, the texture. I actually say it's probably a bit more like something a bit more wheaty, like a like a Lefe or a Ho Garden. Um, the bitter hoppy kick at the back of the throat is very reminiscent of. Um, Hmm. What is that? what is that from? That better kick at the back of the throat. It really reminds me of a specific beer, but I can't quite remember. Either way, it's really nice because it's it gives you this vibrant flash of flavour that then sort of like fizzles out as it like dissipates on your taste buds. And I feel like with some craft APAs, the kind of bitterness at the ends there will kind of just overstay its welcome, or it will just be too overpowering. This kind of cuts just a really fine balance between the two. I feel like. It does linger for a bit long, the bitterness at the end, but what is there is really nice, um, and it has a really, really lovely after taste with a tiny bit of citrus rind uh, and a bit of hoppiness in there as well, so that's really good. Um, and then the full body of the flavour is really simple. It's, this, is, this is probably this beer's greatest strength. This is easily um, Hazy Gravy's biggest strength in the... Um, the flavour is just very simple. It's just very simple hops um, with an almost citrusy, rindy kind of undertaste that then sort of fizzles out into the aftertaste. And a really interesting through line of um, of I would say almost like a citrusy sort of like fruit salad kind of taste, like a um, fermented like fruit salad. It really sort of brings everything together, that central bit of the flavour. It almost tastes like I'm eating a sort of like a, a boozed up um, like lemon or lime really uh, with like some ginger and like uh, parsley or coriander. It sort of has a really sort of very slightly herby but mostly sort of citrusy and hoppy through line that's sort of undercut by a really ni nice rindy kind of undertaste. But yeah, what's here is really solid. Mm. I think... I toed down the bitterness at the end a little bit, um, and um, I'd say like the texture could be a little bit more hazy, but that being said, this is still, honestly, probably one of, if not the best APAs I've ever had on the show. Um, this is really, really good stuff. Um, guys, um, Elliot, Tozer, and um, the... The third gentleman you guys mentioned who re who did a lot of the work, uh, hard graft with making this. You'll have to correct me in the comments because I cannot remember his name and I feel dreadful about that. Um, you three who did this, massive credit to you. This is easily, easily a 9 out of 10. Really, really solid stuff. It could even be pushing on for a 9.5. Um, but yeah, as it is, it is at the very least a 9 out of 10. This is excellent Excellent, excellent, excellent. Really nice. One of the best pale ales I've had ever, really. No, really, honestly, I love this. This is really, really good stuff. Nice bottle, nice label, good colour, good nose, lovely taste, lovely texture, solid. Um, yeah, very much appreciated, boys. And uh, if you have any more uh, of your delightful home alcohols you want me to try in the future, please let me know. And as for everyone watching at home, if you have any uh, suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, let me know in the comments section down below, as well as any other ideas or thoughts you might have had on anything out throughout this video. Uh, if you want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. And if you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe, uh, but only if you want to. And until next time, have fun, stay safe for whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, take a mask with you to the shops, drink responsibly, know your limits, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Cellar. Bye-bye for now.